Hello and welcome to another tutorial in ANSYS Workbench. In this tutorial we're going to create a named selection using a worksheet. We're going to create a remote point and then we're going to use ANSYS APDL commands to compute the rotations at that remote point. So to begin with we're going to start with this geometry and it's going to be a cantilevered beam made out of square tubing. So I'm going to come here and the first thing I'll do is right click on model and insert a named selection. And now I can see that the named selection shows up here and it is looking for a geometry entry. I'm going to click on the top window here for the scoping method and click on worksheet. When I do that it comes over here and generates this worksheet. I can lift this up a little bit to give myself a little bit more room. Now what I do is come to action and I right click on the box below action and click add. And that brings up a new line for me to enter in the rest of the data. I'm going to go ahead and try to select some vertices. So I'll select vertex. The criterion that I'm going to pick is equal to or along the z-axis the operator hello and welcome to another tutorial in ANSYS Workbench in this tutorial we're going to create a named selection using a worksheet we will then create a remote point and then we'll use ANSYS APDL commands to compute the rotations at that remote point the geometry that we're going to use is this hollow square tube. So to begin with, I come over here to model and I will right click and then click insert named selection. I can see that it brings up this named selection in the project tree. I can see down here that it is looking for me to enter the selection but I'm going to change the scoping method from geometry selection to worksheet. So I click on worksheet. It opens up this worksheet down here. To populate the worksheet, I come and I right click on the empty box below action and click add. That brings up this line for me to enter in the rest of my information. On entity type, I'm going to click on any entity type and I'm going to pick vertex because I will be selecting vertices to enter into this named selection. I then come to criterion and click on criterion and the criterion that I'm going to use is the location along the Z axis. So I click location Z. The operator that I'm going to pick is equal to, you can see that I could go not equal, less than, greater than and so forth. I'm going to pick equal to. The units are in meters. Now in terms of the value, I need to be careful here that I enter in the right value. I can see my local coordinate system here is showing that Z is going off in the positive direction this way. The length of my beam is a half a meter, so I actually need to enter in a minus 0.5 if I want to select these vertices out on this face here. So I come to value and I'll click in a zero or a minus 0 0.5, enter. Now I come over here to generate and I can see that it has selected eight vertices and I can see that the eight vertices are shown over here so that I can double check to make sure that the right quantities were selected. So that's how you can do a named selection using a worksheet. In this example, it was not necessary to do that. I could have come here and selected these with a box select and other methods more quickly. But this shows you the power of using this worksheet if you had a more complicated. Before creating my remote point, I'm going to come here and change the name of the name selection that I just created. So I click on that and then click F2 on my keyboard and I'm going to type in points. I'm now ready to create my remote point. To do that, I come up to Model and right-click, click Insert, and come down to Remote Point. And it generates this new line, Remote Points, in my project tree. I can come down here and see that it is 
waiting for me to enter in a selection, I'm going to change the scoping method from geometry selection to name selection and use the name selection that I just created. So I can click on that box and click on points. I'm now ready to enter in the APDL commands. So I right click on remote point, insert and click commands. And this brings up this interface that lets me work with APDL commands. And what I need to type in here is measure underscore pilot equals underscore n pilot. And what I'm essentially doing here is I'm selecting these remote points to be the name selection points that I created. And so now I can go back through and make sure I've done everything correctly in my remote points. I can see that I've got my measure pilot equals underscore end pilot. Then I click on my remote point and everything looks good here. My name selection and my points. And then I can click on remote points here and it says show connection lines no. If I click this box and open it to click on yes, I can see that these lines are drawn connecting my vertices and my remote point will be at the center of where all of those vertices connect. And so this is kind of a handy tool to make sure that you can see that your remote point is indeed where you expect it to be. You can also check the coordinates of your remote point by clicking on remote point and coming down here and you can see that it's located at 00, zero minus 0.5 which is right here at the center. So I'm now ready to continue on with the rest of my model development like we would do in a normal scenario. I'll click on mesh. I've meshed this before, so I'll remesh it here, but I have changed my resolution to a 7 based on the previous meshing. So I'll click generate, and this will generate my mesh. Now I'm going to come and enter in my boundary conditions. I'm going to enter in a fixed support on this end. So I'll be on the face select tool, click this face and click apply and have a fixed support there. On this face out here, I'm going to put a moment. So I'll click on this front face, then click moment. And the moment that I'm going to enter in is about the Z axis. And so I can see that this is the z-axis that I want to twist about. So I'll change this from vector to components and change my z-component to be 5,000 newton meters. And you can see when you do that, you get a nice little red arrow showing that you've got an applied moment on that face. I'm now ready to select my output. I'm going to select a, an equivalent stress and then a total deformation. Then I'm going to look at the rotations at this point. So I'll right click on solution, insert, and this is where I will insert more APDL commands. So I come down to commands and click on, click on commands. This brings up another APDL interface window. And here I type in my underscore rotation Z is equal to rotation Z and now, now I type in the measure pilot that I had before. Measure underscore pilot. And then I can mu multiply this by 57.29 to convert it to degrees. Otherwise, the result would be given in terms of radians. So I now have my APDL command entered. And I can come up here and click solve. This is a relatively small model with not too many elements and it'll solve quickly. I can see that I have green check marks by everything and I can see that when I click on my commands I come down here and I see that my rotation Z so the rotation at that point is 0 0.26032 degrees. Now there's a bug that I want to share with you that I've found a a fix for but it's kind of a bad bug. I should be able to change this and you can see now that my commands has changed because I changed this line here but it's essentially the exact same code. 
And when I click solve on this, now I get a zero here for my rotation Z. And all I did was put a space in there. What I have found that you need to do is come back up to the remote points and come to the commands in the APDL there. And you need to make some change here as well. If I change this, for example, to get rid of that equal sign, that space between the T and the equal sign, now when I come down and solve this again, and click on commands, I get a number again. And so now there's a bug that I want to warn you about. If I come here and come back to my rotation Z and I type a space and then a backspace there, I haven't changed the code at all. If I click on solve and run it again, and then I click on my commands, I see that a zero pops up. And what I have found is that if you make a change here, you've also got to come back to the command code underneath remote point and make a change. Even if you delete a space and put it back in, now that I have changed the code, just it's exactly the same. I made a change and then changed it back. Now if I hit solve, it'll go through and process the data again. And when I click on my commands, I get my 0.26 back. So if you make a change in your APDL commands here, you need to go back and make a change. Or, and even if you change it right back, you need to do that here in the remote point commands APDL code. So hopefully this helps you uh, use named selections in a worksheet and create remote points and look at rotations at those remote points. Thanks for watching.